Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Guitar Guts Podcast. This is episode number five. I am Mark Murray, and my guest today is Jesse Chifo from Wisconsin. He's in a band called Growing. You can check them out, growingtheband.com, or over on Spotify. That's where I heard them. Um, they got a new album out called The Gauntlet. It's up on Spotify or, like, like, like I said, their website, growingtheband.com, so go check that out. You can follow the band at Growing the Band on Instagram, or you can follow my guest, Jesse, here at Chesty Beefo. I'll have the links to all this stuff down in the YouTube description or at guitarguts.com if you're listening to just the audio of this. Please subscribe on YouTube and iTunes. You can actually get the audio version on iTunes, the video version on YouTube, and I have video uh, record the guests also. So you can watch the conversation back and forth that I have with them. You can see the guitars we're talking about. It's really cool. Or if you're going to do it while you're at work or at the gym or working out or you know, uh, working around the house, you can get the audio version, throw it in your earbuds, and iTunes is the place for that. If you want to support the show, head over to guitarguts.com, and there is a couple banners right at the top. One of them is for my Amazon affiliate link. So if you go through that link, anything you buy from Amazon, I'm going to get a small cut. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it's Amazon's way of thanking me for sending more people to their site. So it's right at the top. There's an Amazon uh, banner right there. You click that, and then it's going to open up Amazon just like normal. But what you can do is save that banner, the website that it opens up, the Amazon homepage, save that on your computer as Amazon. So then anytime you need to go to Amazon, you'll click that link, and it's really already going through my, my username. So you're going to get the same great deals you're always going to get on Amazon, but they're going to support the show and help me out. So that'd be a huge help. Another way to help out the show is checking out my sponsor, Iron Age Accessories. So they make kill switches for guitars. If you don't know what a kill switch is, here's one that's not been installed yet. Um, it's a little button that you stick in the guitar. This one's got the gold bezel. They have ones with black, chrome, gold. That matches the hardware. Then there's the little LED light on the inside. Not all of them have lights, but this one's got a red light on inside, inside there. Perfect for my Edwards. So I'm going to be putting it on this thing pretty soon. Gold, hardware, red light. It's going to look so awesome. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to put it. So comment down below. Let me know. I was thinking maybe in between the knobs here. I don't want to remove a knob. Maybe I'll put it down here in like the triangle form. Maybe up here somewhere. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below because I would love to hear your guys' opinions on that. If you want to hear what a kill switch is, here, let me show you a clip real quick of what it actually does. Super awesome, right? So head on over to ironageaccessories.com or go to guitarguts.com and click my link, the banner right at the top of the page right under the Amazon or right next to the Amazon or something. And it's going to uh, get you 10% off. GG-10 at checkout will get you 10% off. So head on over to guitarguts.com, click my banner, and go over to Iron Age Accessories. Get yourself a kill switch. Now let's get on into the episode with Jesse Chifo of Growing the Band. All right, everybody. Well, welcome to the show. We got Jesse Chifo from the band Growing. What's up? How's it going, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. I am... Uh... I'm in Washington, D.C. right now. On Whoa. Tour. Yeah. yeah. How we're far in, in are you guys on your tour right now? Um, I think I have my laminate on. Uh, like almost halfway through. I would say like eight shows in out of 20. Nice, so, dude. That's a nice run. Yeah. Yeah. The longest tour we've ever done. That's for sure. Where'd you guys start and where are you guys going? Um, we started in Madison, where we're from. Um, we did our CD release show, and then we pretty much have gone. We went to New Hampshire. We're down in D.C. We're going down to North Carolina, Alabama, or Alabama, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, over to Texas, and then back up to the Midwest. Our last date's in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Jeez, so, are you driving to Texas? Yeah. Holy crap, that's a nice little drive, huh? Well, we have shows like all in between, so every drive hasn't been too bad, but there's a couple like like seven or eight hour drives that suck. Damn. Um, <laughs> I was looking at my contacts and I noticed that before 
was... before you guys were growing, I forgot you guys were called Look I'm Burning. Yeah. Yep. And like, how long ago was that? Because for people uh, who don't know, I used to do podcasts for like the last few years. I would just do, you know, conversational podcasts. And I've had Jesse on uh, maybe twice, maybe three times. I mean, more yeah. than once for sure. Two or three times. But it's been a couple years. I haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably been since. It's a good idea to try. Uh, I think it's been like two years, I want to say, something like that. Um, two or three, because I wasn't living at my new place in Madison when we talked. Uh, and it was just over the phone. I just called in. Um, but I know we've done one Skype thing like way back in the day. Um, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, man, it's been a while. Good to see you. Dude, good to see you too. I'm glad to see the band still kicking. How is the, everything going with you guys? I know you got a new album out called The Gauntlet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it came out last Friday, the fourth, May fourth, um, and yeah, we're just on our our tour to support the release of the record, the longest tour we've ever done. Um, it's been a lot of fun so far. A lot of the smaller shows have been pretty small, but um, started off with our CD release show, which was crazy. It was the biggest show we've ever ever not ever been a part of, but it's the biggest show that was our show. Damn, so, congratulations. Was, That's awesome. It's, it's good to be uh, be at at the peak, you know, now and not looking back and being like, oh, we used to be doing so much better. Uh, yeah, definitely. That would suck. <laughs> um, by the way, if you're just listening to the podcast and you're not watching it on YouTube, we're cracking a couple beers. I think this is the first one I've had beer on, I think. Sierra Nevada? Is that what that I'm is? I'm drinking a, yeah, a Torpedo. Nice. What do you got, a Corona? Is that what that was? Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yep. Um, and I was thinking about this, too. How did we actually meet originally? Was it through, like, the Death Squad podcast yeah. and all the, Rogan and all that? Yeah. yeah, back in the day, the, the like, all the – there's, like, a lot of, like, city-specific Death Squad accounts on Twitter. I don't think it's, like, super active anymore because I don't think Red Band does a whole lot of stuff. I don't know. I I haven't, like, kept tabs on him in the last – pretty much since he stopped being a part of the – the JRE show, uh -huh. um, but but yeah, it's been like five or six years be because of that, dude. I've met a ton of people through like uh, just like Death Squad stuff or Joe Rogan stuff, or and everybody's been super cool. So yeah, it's a cool community for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, so let's get into the guitar talk. Okay. How long have you been playing guitar, and how'd you get your start originally? Your first guitar, how'd you get all that? Um, I've been playing music, like, since I was, like, 12, I think, 12 or 13. Um, and I started playing bass, actually. Um, and the only reason that happened was because one of my best friends was a drummer, and the other guy that was playing music with us already had a guitar, so I ended up just, like, playing bass. And I didn't, I didn't have a bass for the longest time, um until the guy who was playing guitar, his dad actually brought home a bass for me. And I was like blown away by that. I paid him back for it, but he, he bought one in the same color. I think it was a, a Ibanez, like this really cheap model Ibanez. I don't even remember the model, but uh, he bought it for me and matched our other guitar players' guitars. So that was really cool. And then uh, played bass through uh, high school and a couple punk bands and then I got my first guitar the summer between high school and college, and I was staying with my brothers, like just kind of partying basically for the summer before I went off to school. And they had a they had a guy who was kind of like the guy on the couch, and <laughs> he had this uh, red uh, like Dean Strat copy, um, really shitty guitar, but I, I bought it for like fifty bucks. And then uh, he bought weed with that fifty dollars, and then I think I sold it later in college for fifty dollars, and I bought weed with it. So <laughs> perfect. <laughs> it, it had it had like a bunch of rolls of nickels in the back to keep the the bridge like like stationary, I guess. I, I don't know. I never took them out, but I saw that there was like rolls of nickels back there. So maybe it was worth like fifty two dollars. <laughs> so ghetto. Have you ever seen those videos online where people take apart like old VCRs and inside it's like about hacking a VCR and inside they pull out like iPads and iPhones and like they're like, you know, inside every VCR is actually a, b a bunch of rolls of quarters. We got um, 24 AA batteries and it's like all this awesome shit that's supposed to be 
inside these devices. It sounds like that guitar. Like you open the back up and it's got like um, rolls of coins and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it stayed in tune kind of and it got me through like two years of playing guitar, electric guitar anyway. And then uh, I finally got my first guitar that I, I bought that I really wanted was a, a Jackson Dinky, like a whatever, the Indonesian one or whatever. It's uh, I still have it. Um, but yeah, I played that forever, and uh, and now I'm on to this Ibanez here. Oh, there it is. There it is. The uh, red with the yellow pickups. It's it's like the McDonald's guitar. A little bit, yeah. Soon you could once you've served over a billion uh, audience members, you're gonna have to like add something on there for that. <laughs> I was hoping <laughs> to get them to sponsor me, but I haven't reached back. So, oh come on, McDonald's, get it together. <laughs> When you got your bass, what was the first couple songs you started learning? Um, I remember exactly. I didn't have an amp. Like I said, I didn't even have I had no intention on doing any of this and I had a instrument cable but no amp, but the stereo that my mom had in the basement had a microphone input. So I just plugged my bass into the the like I might have been like a pioneer head um like mm-hmm. stereo receiver. And I would, I kept shocking myself because there's like, there wasn't grounded or anything. So every time I touch it, I would just risk, you know, getting shocked. But I remember playing like, uh, I think I learned um, "Crazy Little Thing Called Love" was like the first song that I learned all the way through because I was like, that bass line's really cool. I want to learn that. And then I started learning tabs, which were always wrong and are still always wrong. Um, so I'm sure I played it really poorly but that was that was like the first song i i learned how to play and then it turned into just like misfit songs and ramon songs which were pretty much all the same so that's cool. so did you uh you liked playing bass then right i did yeah yeah it was a lot of fun then why did you switch to guitar um i i mean i haven't I just got an electric guitar and i mean i you know as a bass player you usually always end up picking up the drum set when nobody's around or the guitar when nobody's around and i just got a guitar and it was it was more fun to play i guess in my dorm than bass like you, you got you kind of i guess you don't really need an amp but this is like 2005 so like the mobile recording stuff and all that stuff wasn't really a thing yet so I, you really needed an amp to feel it and to hear what you were doing so i was just playing you can hear electric guitar when you're not plugged in pretty well so I just mm-hmm. jam on that and found a good, found another guy that was kind of the same skill level as me. So we kind of like taught each other what we knew and started a band in college. And yeah, really cool. Um, what, what, your Ibanez you just showed me there. What model is that? Uh, it's the thirty five seventy Z R G. They made a blue ver. We actually have the blue version too on tour with us. <laughs> we have this uh, as a backup. Um, but yeah, they made a blue one and this red one. Um, I don't see a lot of red ones. I've seen one or two blue ones out there, but it's a pretty awesome RG model. They, I think they brought them back and made like a orange one recently, like pumpkin orange or something like that. But it has, it has a black pick guard on it, which I am not a fan of. So this one doesn't, it's pretty straightforward. I, I never use the middle pickup ever. So if I do ever get another guitar, this is like my go. I have no nothing bad to say about this. I probably will never get rid of it. But if I get another guitar, it'll just be two humbuckers and no Floyd Rose or anything. Oh, you don't use the Floyd Rose too much? Not really. I might use it to like because I run a like a decimator and there's a noise gate on my amp. So if I want to get like some feedback going, I kind of have to like wiggle the strings a little bit. So I might I might play with the bridge just to get some different feedback sounds but i never touch it it does help it stay in tune pretty well but i never i never actually the last time i used the the whammy bar i bro- i like broke a string like immediately so i i don't know not my thing um what tuning do you guys play in uh we're in drop c tuning okay so, i was uh playing some ghost last week and they're full step down okay yeah it's so- full step down and then drop the the low string like Drop D, but yeah. Those aren't the stock pickups, right? Those yellow pickups? No, they, they are the stock pickups. What pickups are these? These are DiMarzio 
Air, DeMarzio, Air Norton. Air Norton and... uh, if you look, it's the stock, whatever it comes on it. If you want to Google it, they you can... DeMarzio. DeMarzio, some or others. Okay, cool. <laughs> and I, How... I like them a lot. I think they let you hear the full chord voicings and the leads sound great. Uh, I like them a lot. I have, I've done nothing to this guitar, and I've loved it since the day I got it. Yeah, it looks custom. I, it didn't feel uh, stock looking. Yeah, it it it's it is the stock model, and they made them for like two years, like this, I think. So, but yeah, it's a great guitar. If you ever find one, I got mine for like eight hundred bucks used, which is they they sell for like eighteen hundred new. Jeez, so, you got if you ever a killer one, deal. Yeah, yeah. If you ever find one. Definitely try it. I'm sure it's just like every other RG, but the the paint scheme and the the colors or the the um, pickup colors and everything are are unique to this this model. So, do you buy it online? Uh, I think eBay. I, yeah, I, I honestly it. don't really remember the transaction. I think my girlfriend at the time had an eBay account. She got it for me, and then or I might have gotten it on Guitar Center's used section. I don't know if I don't know if it's still like this, but back in the day, if you went on the Guitar Center's used section, you could find the most ridiculous deals because their employees know nothing. They know absolutely nothing, so you could find like stuff for more than fifty percent off of what it should be. And if you're lucky enough to get it, then I don't. Is it still like that? They're a lot better now. They're better. Yeah. There's, yeah. Also, I've noticed that. Um, there's so more many more people actually on those websites now looking like American Musical Supply also has like a blam and like closeout section that you used to be able to get gear really cheap through mm-hmm. there and then I think there's just so many people are aware of it now that they're always on there looking at that stuff. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we use Reverb and eBay and uh, Facebook Marketplace, like all that stuff. Our other guitarist uh, buys and sells gear constantly. We actually just went to uh, Sweetwater. Uh, we had a day off the other day. And we were in Indi- Indiana. Do you know about Sweetwater? I, I know that they sell a lot of instruments, but I've never, well, I've never seen the building or the facility. Yeah, it's kind of like their m- music warehouse mecca place. I don't know. We know a couple guys that work there, so we we got a tour, and uh, he, he ended up picking up uh, the new PV Invective. I don't know if you've heard anything about that. It's Misha designed it from Periphery. It's basically like a. 5150 mixed with like an Ingle Powerball. It's Damn. Kinda, and it, the the options are crazy. If whoever is listening to this, like Google it and look at look at all the options you get on the back of the amp. You'll be blown away. For the money, it's it's insane, and it sounds really good too. You didn't pick anything up? Uh, no, no. I mm-hmm. I'm totally content with my sound and everything I'm using. But what, what kind guy, of amp do you? Uh, I have an Ingle Powerball. Hmm. Nice, nice amp right there. Yeah, yeah. We've gone back. We used to have the Axe Effects for a little while, but we went back to two amps recently. And he, our other guitarist uses a Ingle Invader. And then the last couple of shows since he got that Invective, he switched over and has been playing that live just to see how it sounds. It sounds pretty good. We haven't really got like a really good uh, monitoring of it like while we're playing, just because we're on stage and the venues we play, the monitors usually suck. So. <laughs> You don't really get a good feel for it, but so far so good. Um, what you guys? Uh, where'd you record the record at? Uh, we did it ourselves. Really? Um, yeah, we did it all. Uh, our other guitarist. If you want to come over here. No. Okay, he doesn't want to come over. Here. Uh, he built a studio at his house, and we did it all ourselves. Wow. So mic'd up amps, or did you like re reamp anything, or d- go digital? Yeah, we did live drums and then mixed some of the drums with samples. Um, and then we did, we just tracked direct into Cubase and then reamped. Um, I think, what did we use for guitars? For guitars? The sound? Yeah, what amp? It was that Eggnator mod thing. Oh, he, so he, I don't know if you ever messed with those Randall mods, those RM100 mods. I've seen them, but I've never used one. Yeah, you, so you can get them all modded out to sound like whatever, basically. And he's got, I think he had like 20 of them at one point in time. Um, but we used like a Ignator, Ignator version. What, what was the preamp? It was 
Oh, it was a 6505 modeled preamp through that uh, Eggnator made basically the same housing to fit those Randall mods. So we used that for the power amp, and then that was the sound on the record. Ah, sounds killer. Um, it's on Spotify if anyone wants to go check it out. That's where I heard uh, you also emailed it to me, but then right when I saw the email, I was like, I bet you it's on Spotify. I checked. Yeah. There it yeah. is. Yeah, check it out. Um, do you have a favorite song on the record? Um, I don't know. I, uh, probably, um, I think the song that we haven't played live and did no videos for, <laughs> I think it's, I probably, that's probably why I like it. Cause I haven't heard it as, as many times as the other ones, but that's the second song on the record. Um, a song I wrote during writer's block part two, which is a reference to a look I'm burning song. So it kind of like, if you know about what we used to be, then that you know about that but for now everybody's kind of like why is it part two where's the part one yeah it's kind of cool though because it leaves like mystique and then the hardcore fans they know what's up yeah 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 yep i had a song a few years ago i wrote I, it was called b1 with the wires and something happened on my computer the whole song got deleted and i was like oh i loved it so i wrote as much as i could back from memory which was probably like half of it or something and then uh i called it b1 with the wires v2 like version two yeah and people were like what's v2 it it, it, it just kind of fit with the the title of the song too and so i i just i did explain yeah. it but but it was kind of looked cool yeah there's a there's a couple bands that have the weirdest song title like fallout boy look at all their song titles they're, they're meaningless mm -hmm. absolutely meaningless i maybe maybe there's something behind it but i know like under oath has some weird song names uh but yeah, I don't know. It stands out for sure. If it's not just like angels risen from ash or whatever, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, just a metal name. Yeah. Um, so what's, do you guys have put up live videos on your social media? Um, yeah, we, we try and – I think we've been switching. I kind of handle a lot of that stuff, but I've been using Instagram a lot more than, than Facebook. Well, maybe not a lot more, but about as much as Facebook recently. Those are pretty much the two uh, social media things that we do. We have a Twitter, but nope. I mean, there's like 70 followers, I think, over there. We're not active on it. Um, but yeah, we do live videos sometimes. We'll do um, just like tour updates. If you go on there right now and you look at our stories, you'll find some entertaining stuff. So, it, it, With all the bands out there and like metal is... I, I mean, people, for a couple of years, it seemed like people were saying metal was dying. But I don't know. I feel like it's as strong as ever right now. There's so many good metal bands out there. How, how, how do you compete and stand out about, uh, with all these other metal bands? And like, what, do you guys, what would you say is different about you guys that makes you stand apart uh, from the rest? I think our, our – well, for one, our, our songwriting is like – pretty unique it's pretty linear like there's not there might be like two choruses on the entire record um but it all kind of flows pretty well it's all cohesive it's not like just like tech you know like prog tech like where it's eight minutes of riff after riff after riff it's it's like pretty uh digestible i would say even though we do have screaming and you know a lot of people get turned off by that but uh, we do combine screaming and singing, so I guess that would be another thing that makes us a little more unique. Um, it's not as cut and dry as like your typical screaming of the verses and singing of the choruses. So, um, but I would say like one of the most unique things is our is our live show for sure. Um, we bring we're a pretty small band, but we do bring like uh, like a light show with us. So if you if our music is dismissible for you in any way, like you will remember what you just saw, that's for sure. So do you have someone else who runs the light show, or is it pre-programmed? How does that work? We used back in the Look on Burning days, we used to have somebody stand. Either one of us would do it, or somebody would stand on stage, and they were literally like foot pedals that turned. They, they were very simple, but just turn these light towers on or off, and that was. And we had strobes too, so they was either on or off, and then. Um, when we turned into growing, we wanted to revamp the light show. So we got, we have LED lights and uh, strobes and like fog machine, and it all runs wirelessly through Cubase. So our drummer plays to a click, 
in his ear, and then all of that, basically, you, ju you just write a, a MIDI track to like trigger all the lights. And there's a plugin um, for Cubase that will allow you to like make presets. So it's essentially like writing another uh, instrument's part for the song. Um, but it's all set up, so we just hit play, and everything gets triggered when it needs to be triggered. And sometimes there's issues, but we have a pretty all the quarks pretty well worked out. Dude, that is really cool. I haven't really heard about anyone doing like something like that. It's a uh, it's a headache for sure, but it can be done. <laughs> we people ask us all, at bands ask us all the time, how can we do that? And I'll tell them, and I will never hear anything more about it. They won't show up with the lights because it's it's expensive to get the all the things set up, definitely. But it's it's just a massive headache to the the program doesn't work quite right or I don't know. But but yeah, it's cool once it once it's all dialed in. Did you see another band, like a big band is doing that or something, and that's where you guys got influenced? Or did you guys just love, you know, uh, lighting setups? Like, what, how'd that start? I think before I joined the band, Look I'm Burning played a show with this band called, was it Abandon All Ships? Do you remember this story? I, from when I, because I was told this story when I joined the band, but I think that this band, if you look them up, they were like, kind of like techno emo core something or other band abandon all ships and they had this crazy light show and i think that's where they got the inspiration for it maybe i'm wrong he doesn't seem to remember and he's been in the band since the beginning so but i remember that story from somebody um so. how has your guys's band evolved since you guys first started um it's pretty much the, like the writing style is the same. Um, I think things have gotten a little more melodic. Um, I don't know what the next record will be like, but things have gotten like more melodic, more attention to uh, chord voicings and stuff like that. Our, our drummer writes all like the basis for all of our music. It's, it's his birthday today too. He's taking a nap right now. But um, oh. what's his name? Uh, uh, Paul. Paul Swift. Dude, well, tell Paul I said happy birthday. I will. I will. We're actually staying. We're at his uh, sister's house in D.C. Um, on our, we had yesterday off and today off. So we're. I think we're gonna go. It's his birth. It's his sister's birthday too today. So we're gonna go to the casino when she gets done with work and hopefully not blow all of our money. <laughs> Are they twins? Uh, they're not twins. They just happen to have the same birthday. Yeah. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder what happened nine months before this date that their parents were celebrating year after we year. We've thought about this for years. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there's an answer, but um, but yeah, our, he he writes like all the the core structure of every song, and then we bring ideas to the table, and he's kind of the final filter before the song is like completely done. And he usually tries to come up with one new chord for like every song, and not, maybe it might not be that that often but there's a lot of really weird chords that we have to learn like a lot of weird voicings that his fingers do stuff that ours don't so we have to redo them like up the neck or drop a note or something like that but it's pretty it's pretty weird stuff so he has a background in guitar playing too then uh yeah yeah and like theory or writing or something he right he was a guitarist before uh drummer oh cool so, so yeah um, what else, like, um, you got your lighting, you got, yeah, is there anything else that you want to start throwing into the mix? Like maybe a, what about like a hologram? Oh, that would be Dude, sick. We were trying to, think of, trying to think of something new to add to the mix for our CD release show and then for the tour. But, uh, um, I don't know, man, it's the, 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 the venues, the size of the venues we're playing. It's, it's pretty tough to get like just a normal band's gear on the stage, let alone trying to add anything extra. So, yeah. um, I don't know. We'll, we'll think of something Plus. cool, something, something different. Um, if any bands, metal bands in, in your sort of wheelhouse are starting out, and what, what, what kind of advice could you give them for getting on tour, getting your record out, promoting, all this kind of stuff? Um, man, that's uh, – uh, yeah, we've been doing this so long. It's, I'm trying to think like – over I think the, that's a big we, part of learned, it. We've learned everything yeah. what not to do. It was like tornado. Um, I would say do it yourself as as much as possible. Like don't don't let other people 
try and you try and get you to pay them to work uh, for you. Um, there's so much stuff you can do yourself. Everybody can learn Photoshop. Everybody can learn how to use a DAW or we even an analog recording system. Like, do it yourself until you absolutely cannot do it yourself anymore. That's that's probably my biggest piece of advice. You're gonna, just going to waste so much money, like, and you'll know from start to finish, like everything that happened, all the 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 weird things, all the mistakes. Like, yeah, just do it yourself until you can. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like with the lighting. You guys learned how to do that yourself with the recording, the album. You guys recorded it yourself. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Yeah, we we we've worked with other people, like pretty big names in the past, and it's just been. Uh, not the best products that it could have yeah. been, and you know you always think like, oh, we go to this this engineer, well, we're gonna get a record deal, Ooh. and that's just not the case, at all. Like at all, they just, they're they're doing their job, and their not their job is not ta talent scouting or you know I'm sure they could make a phone call to somebody, all right, but call us again when you're that's done. that's sure them that. like awkwardly like calling somebody right. that they know. I mean it's. Sisters, yeah. It's kind of a gross situation at that point, but mm -hmm. yeah, just do do it yourself and and uh, and be as honest as possible. And those are my biggest pieces of advice. <laughs> um, so you guys, did you book your whole tour and set it up? You don't have a manager or a booking agent, right? We we do. Okay, so right before this tour started, we got we already booked the tour, but we did get a booking agent. We haven't actually booked any shows with them yet, so probably our next tour we're gonna use them or really, hopefully it shows from here on out. But uh, we do, and we also have a manager. Um, but yeah, I mean we've it, that's using those terms pretty loosely. I mean we can call our manager if, if we have any questions or anything like that. But he kind of just lets us do whatever we want to do and that's definitely how we wanted it he's there uh when we're ready for like these next steps these like transitionary periods like he knows he's been in the industry forever um but yeah we booked us and the other band that we're on tour with contra they're from chicago like the video game mm -hmm. um, but they there's a period at the end of the name their name they're very adamant on people <laughs> saying it with a period well, I mean, you knew when your band was called Look, I'm Burning, it's Look, comma, I'm Burning, exclamation point, right? Mm, well, there's the apostrophe in the I am. So, yeah, the punctuation stuff is, is tricky. And then to have that translate, like when we set up, so, yeah, we set up all of our Spotify account, like all, all that stuff, and there's, there's weird quirks there where you can't use, like, punctuation. So if your band name has punctuation... I don't know what happens. You probably have to send 300 emails, and I don't know. Who knows? I would say there's my next piece of advice: make everything as simple as possible. Yeah, seriously. I used my band, my old band, when I was in high school. It's called Luck Down, L U C K D O W N. Okay. And every time we would say it, people would say, "Oh, Lockdown. That's a good name." And we'd be like, "No, no, no, Luck mm -hmm. Down." And they're like, "Luck Down? Like, yeah. what the fuck is Luck Down?" Dude. All the all the bands in like the fifties and sixties stole all the like the easiest names like the meteors or the whatever. And people to this day still throw the in front of our name or an S at the end of our name or every other band name. I somebody recently said the Fallout Boy, which is insane. Not was to make a hundred years old reference, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. People just don't read things correctly and. Never ask questions if they're not sure. But so you guys don't. Do you guys have jobs? Yeah. Like how do you go on uh, tour if, if you have a job? Uh, very carefully. <laughs> Did we, you guys all have to like put in way before, and you're you just are lucky enough that you have cool bosses yeah. and a yeah, good, like, good situations? Yeah, we we just uh, try and be as proactive as possible about that. Sometimes it doesn't work out very well, and we have to work like. Our, our like 400 mile radius from Madison is like you can hit Chicago, Minneapolis. Uh, I guess if you want to throw St. Louis into that mix, it's like six hours away. But um, yeah, some a lot of shows, playing shows. We all have first shift jobs, so playing, sh pl working, playing shows, sleeping on the way home, going straight to work when we get back home, and then doing it again, kind of like two or three times until we're officially on the road. 
and then we we all have you know like this tour we have we all have like two two weeks officially off from work um but yeah it's it's tricky but we're, i mean we're not quite there yet for financially to to just uh just be in a metal band <laughs> i don't think anybody anybody can do that yeah times have changed it's a lot harder now than it used to be i think it feels yeah. like yeah. um are you guys in a van how are you getting from gig to gig we have a, a shuttle bus, like a you know, like the buses that take you from hotels to airports. Those shuttle buses. Um, ours had a like a handicap lift in it, and we took that out. And we don't pull a trailer anymore, so we just ripped out all the seats in the back, and put we put our gear back there because there's there's that handicap door where you can load everything into. Um, and then we. Recently, kind of outfitted the front of it so we can sleep. There's seven of us on this tour, um, so seven of us can sleep. Some of us can sleep pretty comfortably. The others kind of got to figure it out. But we've been lucky enough. We know a lot of people around the country that we've been able to crash with people or um, just tough it out in the bus for a night or two. So, yeah. What's it's food nice like on the road? What's that? What's the food like on the road? Uh, it's been all over the place. Last night we we got served like a really nice home cooked meal, which was awesome. Um, some fast food, uh, a lot of Subway. Try and try and keep it somewhat healthy. Uh, and the the other day our our drummer made uh, breakfast with a, we had brought a hot plate with us, and we were using the outlet right outside of a, of a Walmart to cook it. And so we had we had like we were like making eggs and all this stuff and then um the management came out and yelled at us so we we finished what we were making and ate that but all right we have like a little power converter where we can plug stuff into but the hot plate is like 1300 watts or something like that and there's no way that our little thing we need like a legitimate generator to run something like that but we tried it and we actually blew that thing and i had to pick up a new converter at that walmart for like 30 bucks oh damn but but yeah, it's it's. I mean, we're we. You definitely don't have to suffer when you're on tour, and I think that's a pretty big misconception. Like you can you can do it a little bit better than nickel and diming it constantly. You know, you just gotta pick your spots. Be smart about it. Yeah, yeah, and plan ahead a little bit. And I mean, it also depends on again what your day job is like and and all that stuff. So we've been we've been pretty lucky with, with the food situation though been pretty good eating and today we went out for lunch for our drummer's birthday so that was good yeah sounds good yeah um what's uh, some of your favorite concerts you've been to Ooh, uh i think my my favorite show that i ever went to was uh have you ever heard of the the bassist the jazz bassist stanley clark no i, I may have heard his name but i don't know his music uh, it was amazing. I suggest going to see like some any high level jazz shows. And, like, go check it out. It's. Do you listen to a lot of jazz? What's that? Do you listen to a lot of jazz? Not really, but it was just kind of. I think I in college I had just gotten like a financial aid check, aid check, and I had like some money left over, and I was like, I want to go do something like different. So I went on, and there was like a jazz club in uh, Tacoma, Washington which is kind of by where I went to college and I went and it was incredible. Like one of the most insane shows I've ever seen. I love uh, (laughs) clean, good guitar playing, you know, jazz or like even like flamenco. I don't know if you're into like flamenco playing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, uh, do you know Julian Lage at all? No. You should write, write that down. Uh, Like it's Julian G J U L I A N. L A G E Julian Lage, he's incredible. Uh, I think the the guys from Chan like posted about him, and then he came through Madison, and I went and saw him. It was insane. Anything like out of my world, I'm more excited about than like another metal show. I think I'm kind of oversaturated. Um, but like, I grew up on punk, so any punk show, I'm I love. Uh, I like ska shows, those are always fun. Um, the, the earlier Warp tours were some of my favorite shows. And I like 2002 Warp tour. I think was the first one I went to. That was a lot of fun. You saw Finch? Uh, 
I remember Finch? I never really listened to Finch ever. Ah, uh, yeah. I used to love I, Finch. I did see the. Who did we see? Um, I got to see like Rufio, uh, Avenged Sevenfold, like played like the the local stage kind of. <laughs> they didn't really have any tattoos, and they were still kind of like a kind of a deathcore band, if that's what you want to call it, but. Mm-hmm. Um, those are cool, like the weird Misfits lineup where it was just Jerry and uh, the drummer from the Ramones and I think Dez from Black Flag on guitar. That sucked. It was not good, but it was still cool to see. So when they do Warp Tour, uh, what time of year does that come around? Because Wisconsin's pretty cold for during the winter, or I guess uh, Warp Tour is always during the summer, right? Yeah, we Wisconsin Milwaukee's usually the one of the later dates um it's usually in august and it's usually the warp to milwaukee is usually like at the beginning of the week too so it's usually like a monday or something like that um but this year's the last year that they're doing it and i don't know what the lineup's like but i'll probably still go just because <laughs> wait this is the last year yeah yeah they're they're done i think what i think i they haven't announced it yet but i think they're going to do kind of like a riot fest situation where it's just going to be a couple big cities and still call it maybe the warp tour or something, but just do four dates instead of all summer. But I don't, that was just a rumor. I don't know for sure what's going to happen. Hmm. I'm a uh, man. Warp tour vans, warp tour in like 2000, like you're saying three, 2004, yeah. Oh two. Like, I don't know what year it started. That was pretty close to the beginning. I'm guessing, right? 96. Six, I think, was like one of the first ones, and it was just like like eight punk bands on that one, and then over the years it's just gotten crazy. And I think definitely in the last couple of years the attendance has dropped quite a bit. At least that's what I've noticed. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Times are changing, and I think like EDM festivals are definitely like the new kind of warp tour. Coachella and ED and like the you know all those EDM festivals, those are huge. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 31. So uh, the same age as me. So we that's why we both identified with that type yeah. of music, that timing, and all the people in our age aren't going to Warp Tour anymore. But it's kind of crazy that all these old bands from 2003 are all coming back on these 10-year, 15-year reunions now and playing their old albums straight through. Yeah, yeah. That's I think that's the new business plan is like uh, – the 10 year mark or the 15 year mark, uh, you can do a successful tour and why not? You know, I'm sure not a lot of those bands aren't like super active so they can keep whatever jobs they have and be, have a successful tour, like a really successful tour doing a 10 year anniversary thing. And I don't know. I'm cool with it. I get to sing along to all the, the, the songs I grew up on. Like I just saw mustard plug not that long ago. I think they did like a 20 year anniversary of one of their records i don't know but i know all the songs so that was cool yeah that is really cool i saw the used um i think it was like a 15 year reunion and they didn't have one of the members was with them which was kind of a bummer but just to see these guys and like i guess their fan base actually has money when you know 15 years ago when they came around we were 15 years old so like we'd have to like get rides to the concerts you know, yeah. the shirts are 20 or 30 bucks. We could hardly afford those. Now you can go in, bring 100 bucks, and you'll, like, get everything, you know, the whole show. The the, the tickets aren't even expensive. It's, it's yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a, a money move, that's for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's your favorite thing to do outside of playing guitar? Uh, ooh, I mean, it consumes all of my free time, that and my day job. But probably go to comedy shows. I live, uh, I live like a block from the comedy club in Madison, like literally a block away. And I'm, actually some friends of ours that are in another band in Madison are like them and their girlfriends kind of all work at the comedy club. So I just walk up the street. I usually go there like once a week regardless just to have a drink or something. But I go to a lot of comedy shows. I'm hoping to catch one on this tour, but I don't know um, where I think we're going to be in like Baton Rouge on a Friday. So I, there's really no decent shows, comedy shows, until Thursday, Friday, Saturday, as you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. I was hoping to maybe find one or two on this tour, but we'll see. Um, do you see anybody – is there anybody on your list of comedians you want to see that you still haven't got a chance yet? Uh, Big J. And, oh, Big J Okerson. Yeah. 
I uh, think that's going to happen pretty soon. <laughs> you didn't this... hear that from me, but... Oh. Yeah. Um, when you said there's no good comedy till the weekends, I'm right by the comedy store. So every night you go in there, just line up of killers every single night. Yeah, man. The When I was out there, it was on like a Monday. My, my weekend from work is Tuesday, Wednesday. So if I go on any trips, it, I usually start my trip on a Monday. And... Uh, I caught the, I told you about this, we talked the last time, I was there when Rogan came back to the comedy store that night, and uh, it was a Tuesday, and it was insane. Yeah, I think that was the day before Ari Shafir recorded his, one of his specials. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's why uh, Ari said, because I asked him after he did his special, that's why we went out there, and he was just like, yeah, I don't think, I don't think Joe wanted to, like, cause a scene or anything like that by coming to my special the day of so he came the day before and the day of so that he kind of like you know i'm sure he's very mindful of not trying to like steal any thunder from ari's big day or whatever mm -hmm. so yeah it's super cool um i didn't get to go to the laugh factory or anything out there but it's really cool having the comedy club a block from my house they get like they've been getting like pretty much every big headliner um I got to see like Louis C.K. like last minute because I got a I got a phone call or it was a text. It was like come to the comedy club now, and this was before all that shit went down. So he was doing a big show like somewhere else in Madison, and then I got a text saying like come to the comedy club now, and I got to see uh, Joe List was on tour with him. So I when I walked into the comedy club, I actually ran into Louis like physically, and I was some guy wearing a suit. I was like, "Who the fuck is that?" And then I sit down. I'm like, "Holy shit, that was that was Louis right there." And then he did he did like 45 minutes. It was like it was like a very small version of what you get to experience at the comedy store every night. Well, I mean, I go go to the comedy store lately. I've been going like every other month or maybe every third month or something like that. And like not that often, but. There's there's still so many like I've never seen Bill Burr I've never seen Louis oh. I've never seen Dave Chappelle, um, there's like probably like seven people that I really want to see that though the way that the store works is they only go up in the in the original room for 15 minutes and then someone else will go up yeah so a lot of times they'll have the lineups and you go online and you'll see and then once you actually get there it's like four or five people of the lineup switch because there's 15 or 20 people on the whole show. So like they move them around, they take people off the lineup and I've, I've yeah. been supposed to uh, see these people before, but they just aren't there sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's more of like an event for us here. It's not like, not like a 15 minute, like you said, a 15 minute thing. So I've, I've got to see all of those people, like every, pretty much everybody that I've wanted to minus big J and he's like, he's like the metal guy too. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm excited to see him. Um, I just missed when I was in Austin. I went to Cap City um, on vacation. I went down there. I did just went to like the the open mic or whatever. Um, but he was there the weekend before I got there, and I was pretty bummed out about that. But it sounds like I'll be able to see him pretty soon here. So do you have a uh, favorite comic that you've seen, or or a favorite comic in general? Like, um, I don't. I really like. I like Ari. Uh, I like him. I like a lot of comics for who they are and not necessarily for their material. So like, I, cause I listen to so many podcasts. It's like, by the time I already get to see them live, I'm just excited to actually physically see them that they could say the worst jokes ever. And I wouldn't really care that much, but like people that have blown me away, like Mar like Mark Norman and Joe list. I'm a really big fan of both of those guys. Um, Mark Norman's hilarious. I got. Yeah. I figured. I learned we about party. him from Ari's podcast. Yeah, yeah. We partied with him the night he was in uh, in Madison. We partied with him till like six in the morning. It was a lot of fun. Dude, he's funny. He, did you watch the roast battle show? Uh, some of it. I got it like the free version on on the Comedy Central website, so I couldn't watch like the final one. But uh, I did. I did catch some of it. Yeah. Yeah, he was good on there. Who did he battle? I don't remember. It's been you know probably almost two years or something since that happened yeah yeah like all of those all of those people in that battle have been through madison since that that's happened um yeah man i don't know comedy's a lot of fun there's a lot i try to draw parallels between music and comedy but there's a lot of things that are similar but there's a lot of things that are a lot different mm -hmm. so. yeah one but, of the main ones i always hear joe rogan talk about is that musicians when you go see them live all you want to hear is stuff you've already heard they're all their hits and stuff yeah whereas a comedian when they come in 
most people don't want to hear old jokes. They want to hear all fresh stuff. Yeah. So yeah. it's like dead opposites right there. Yeah, I, I think I before I actually started getting into comedy and stuff like that, the I thought that they did new stuff every time they went up. Like, And then I found out very quickly that that is not the case at all. And then I'm like, I... Like it's like when you f- first tell the same story like the same way to your friends, and you're like, "Is that how I told it before?" Like that worked that time. And so you, like you, you get a little taste of it when you when you try and tell the same story to different people, and maybe one person's around, so you gotta like change it up a little bit so that they're still entertained when you're telling it. So, have you ever it, uh, thought about doing comedy? May I've thought about it, but I don't think I would ever do it. I tried it a couple times. I was on Kill Tony a couple times, and then I would go oh, to like right. some open did mics. They, I did it. Did they tear you apart. Oh, dude, it was fucking rough. It was uh, the guy from Workaholics. Um, what's his name? Um, Eric Griffin. Dude, he did not like me. Oh, okay. God, it sucked. <laughs> and you just got to stand there, and you can't really say anything back because then it looks like you're like weirdly defensive. You just have to take their criticism and adv- and advice and. And if you try to say something back witty to them, they're going to tear you apart. Oh, so, like, yeah. You just yeah. got to take the beating. Yeah. I'll, uh, good, good for you for trying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was definitely um, a, a good experience, but yeah. I don't want to do that again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think you definitely have to be insane to, like, really pursue or just be, like, really naturally funny. So, I yeah. – I, mean, I think it also goes back to something you were talking about earlier about like your band has been working your asses off for I think you said seven years or something. Uh, it's like nine. I yeah. Wait, what's twenty eighteen? The band, the original band, started in two thousand nine. So yeah, nine years. See, that's that's what it takes. It takes doing it, and like you said earlier, I, when I asked you what your favorite hobbies are outside of guitar, you're like, I mean, that's kind of all I do. I'm always playing guitar. I'm promoting. I'm doing yeah. Photoshop. I'm writing. I'm doing this. Like. That's to enough. be good at anything like that, like comedy, if you want to be a comedian, you got to do it for 10 years. You got to do it yeah. every day. You got to do it every single day, and you have to want to do it. Because if you don't want to do it, you're not going to be putting in that, the real effort. For sure. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think you learn real quick how much you have to put into things. Like working in a factory, you can get away with doing the same workload every day, but doing like anything creative or trying to be. Trying to push yourself, it's like you gotta commit like all of your time, and it's. I mean, that's what they say is like the journey, not the destination. Like at the end of the day, you you have cool shows, but you just think about all the time that you spent on on those jokes or writing those riffs or talking to people at shows about your band or whatever. Yeah, dude, Jesse. It's been really good talking to you, man. Um, oh, yeah. If you, people want to follow the band, it's at Growing the Band on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Follow Jesse at Chesty Beefo, which <laughs> I'll have the links to those on the Guitar Guts page or down in the YouTube description if you're watching the video. I used um, to post a lot more guitar videos, but I just recently moved in with my girlfriend, and our apartment's like really small, so I don't really have like a way to play loud so much. And mm-hmm. amongst other things, but I, I imagine in the next next year or so, I'll get like a little home recording studio set up once we start recording or writing this next record. So, cool, man. The Gauntlet. That's the new album. Yep. By the Growings. <laughs> I think you nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah, it's growing. Just growing. Just search for that on uh, Spotify. Or do you guys have a website? People can buy the CD, a physical copy. <clears throat> Yeah, it's just uh, growingthevan.com. It, it redirects to our big cartel page. So you can just type that in, growingtheband.com, and it'll take you. We have a bunch of merch right now. We got a bunch of new stuff before this tour. So everything's pretty well stocked. Some of our older stuff isn't, but it's cheaper. So if you see something you like, buy it. We're shipping merch, out, merch orders out on the road, too. So if people want anything, you will get it pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I guess that's about it. <clears throat> if you live, if you live anywhere in the eastern part of the U.S., check out the rest of our tour dates. I don't. When are you going to put this out? This is probably going to come out today, the fourteenth. I think it's coming out next Wednesday, next week. Okay. Uh, then, if you live in Appleton, Wisconsin, or Kalamazoo, Michigan, come see us. 
All right, man. Jesse, <laughs> thanks so much, dude. I'm thanks, happy Mark. to hear the band got the new record. You're on tour. It sounds like things are going really good. Yeah, yeah. Things are on the up and up. Cool, man. All right, thanks, dude. I'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks, man. Cool, later. Bye. Thanks so much for listening or watching, guys. Um, remember, you can always get the podcast every single week. It comes out on guitarguts.com. You can get the audio or the video. Over on YouTube, if you subscribe, you'll get the video every single week. And over on iTunes, you'll get the audio. So subscribe in all places. That'll help me out a lot. Um, please check out guitarguts.com. Click the Amazon affiliate link at the top. Help support the page a ton. Check out Iron Age Guitar Accessories. They also have a banner right at the top of guitarguts.com. So go there, click those banners, enter GG-10 at the checkout. If you want to buy a kill switch, you're going to get 10% off. Got to love that. Um, thanks so much to Jesse Chifo and Growing. Go check them out on iTunes. Um, are they on iTunes? I have no idea. Spotify is what I meant to say. Growingtheband.com also. It's a link to their, um, their merch site. So they have all kinds of t-shirts and stuff on there. Check them out. Um, at Growing the Band is their Instagram and at Chesty Beefo. So all the links are in the YouTube uh, description below and also they're at guitarguts.com. <sighs> Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next Wednesday.